By the end of this lesson, you will know the history and meaning behind totem poles, know how totem poles are made, and create a totem pole that represents you and your family. Totem poles are found in Native American communities of the Pacific Northwest. Let's watch a video using Google Earth to find out where totem poles can be found on our planet. Okay students, we are in Google Earth and we're going to use Google Earth to explore um, some totem poles. And so we're going to start at our school. And so up here in the um, search bar, I'm going to type our school's name, Nathaniel Green Elementary. You can see I've been there before and click on it. And then we're going to zoom to Nathaniel Green Elementary when I click the little uh, magnifying search glass. And here we go. We're going into North Carolina. And now we are at Nathaniel Green Elementary. And there's the art room and there's the dairy next door and we can see all kinds of fun stuff. So we want to go visit totem poles and the totem poles that we're going to go visit are in a town in Canada called Duncan. And so I've already loaded it there and we are going to go look at the totem poles in Duncan, Canada. And that's the Pacific Northwest. Here we go. So now we're in Canada. We flew over the United States and this is the town of Duncan. Aerial view. Aerial means you're up above looking down. And I'm going to go over here to this side and there's a little person. When I, when I roll my cursor around, a little person pops up. And I'm going to take that person and I'm going to drag it over to here because I want to see street view. And that will take me to street view. And there's Duncan Canada street view. How cool is that? And the thing I love about um, this little town is they have a walking tour where you can see all kinds of totem poles. So if you look right here, you can see there's some totem poles already. Um, there's one with a thunder, uh, looks like a thunderbird. And I'm not 100% sure what that one is. And we've got a few other totem poles over here. That one up there might be an eagle. And let's see if we can find some more. Like I said, the whole town is just full of them. And if you ever visit Duncan, you can take a little tour of it. So I'm just taking my cursor and pulling it around to change my view. And then if I click on this little white arrow, that's a little walking arrow. And you have to do it a few times. And I see a couple totem poles up ahead. I wonder if you can see them too. So I see one right over here and another one with some color over there. And if you want to look closer, you can stop and drag it around. This one looks like it has some type of a bird on top and a person on the bottom. And here's another one over there. It looks like it has a bird on top as well. I'm not sure. That might be a bear with a, a fish in its hand. Now let's see what else we can see. Here's another one. Very colorful. I like how they have some paint on it, but at the same time you can still see the wood. Very abstract. Remember abstract means it doesn't look 100% real. Sometimes you can still tell what it is though. There's a really pretty one up here. Let me go a little bit further. And there's a really pretty one right here. You can see it. It's like another Thunderbird. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know if you can tell. Let me go a little closer here. But the bottom of that one right here, that's like a orca or a killer whale. Isn't that neat? And then across here you have a couple other ones. And there's more, Duncan. They have them all over the place. So if you want to leave Street View, you just go up to where it says Exit Street View. And that will pop you back up into your aerial view. And then if you want to go further away, you just hit the minus sign. And you're flying away from the earth and up above and into the atmosphere. I do want to show you one other thing. Actually, a couple of other things um, using Google Earth. So our Earth is a bit topsy-turvy right now because when we were walking around in downtown Duncan, um, north kind of went to the side. This little button here is north. So to ride it, you just have to drag north back up that way. Okay, drag it back up to the top. There we go. Um, and this is the area where you would find totem poles. So we live way over here in North Carolina. And in this area of the United States and into Canada, this is all Canada right here. And then if you go up even a little bit higher, um, this line, this little yellow line, that's where Alaska starts. So up into Alaska and Canada is where you would find the totem poles that we're learning about. And that part of our country is called the Pacific Northwest. Northwest because this is our country 
it's north and to the west. The west is this way, the east is over here. We live on the east part. But Pacific Northwest, because this is the Pacific Ocean, and it butts up against the Pacific Ocean. So that is where you would find totem poles. And if you wanted to go back home from where you would find totem poles, we can go back to Nathaniel Green one more time, just to complete our round trip. And we'll be back at the art room before you know it. There you go. So I hope you have an opportunity to play around with Google Earth. It's super fun, and you can learn so much. Explore it one day. Animals on totem poles can have symbolic meaning. Let's explore some of the animals and what they represent. A bear can represent strength and protection. Do you see the fish he caught? A turtle on a totem pole represents nature and the earth. An owl represents wisdom. A thunderbird represents power, protection, and strength. A wolf represents leadership and family. Hi students, we are going to build our totem pole drawing and we're going to do that by adding four animals to our personal totem pole. The bottom animal is going to represent you. The next animal up will represent your family. The animal above that will represent someone you're very close to. It could be a family member or friend. And the animal above that is going to represent something that you're very good at. So what we're going to do today is just the bottom animal on the totem pole. And we need to pause and take a minute and we need to think about what animal represents us the best? And I'll give you an example. So for example, I'm a teacher. So I need to think about, is there an animal right now on the planet that when we think about that animal, we think about teaching? Well, I know sometimes when we think about an owl, we think, oh, the, a wise old owl. Maybe I could learn from an owl. So perhaps I would select an owl for me. You could come up with an animal that ties back to you in any way. Maybe you're a really fast runner, so you wanna do a cheetah or a horse. Maybe you're a very good singer. So you want to do a bird. Maybe you're a very kind person or a loving person. And that always makes me think of a dog because dogs love to cuddle and they're so sweet. So think about something that you think would represent you and tie to you. It needs to reflect you. It can't just be, oh, I like this animal because it's my favorite animal. Well, tell me why you picked it. Why did you pick that animal? Did you pick a shark because you're a very fast swimmer? I don't know. You're going to tell me, okay? So take a moment and think about what animal you want to choose for your personal totem pole. You will need a brown piece of paper, a pencil, and some crayons for today's lesson. White paper may be used in place of brown. If you have a brown piece of paper at home, please use that for this lesson. If you don't, any type of paper will do, a notebook paper, you know, computer paper. We want it to go vertical the tall way. This is horizontal. We need it vertical, straight up and down, because we're going to take these corners here and we're going to fold under these corners here. Let the two corners meet. We are creating our totem pole. I'm going to crease it because I will need that crease later. Now I'm going to take these two corners and I'm going to let them meet the top two corners. So I'm folding it one more time. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect, just do your best. And again, I'm going to crease that because I need that crease in a minute. When I open that back up, I have a piece of paper with four sections and I can build my totem pole right in the middle. Watch the next video before you begin drawing. Once the video is over, it will be your turn to draw. When we're all done, you can even take your paper and you'll be able to roll it around like an old paper towel. If you have an old paper towel, uh, container you can do that or you can even just tape the back put a little tape on the back and it'll stand up and you have your own totem pole all right so we're going to work down here i'm going to use a marker for this i highly suggest that you work with pencil and then when you're done trace over with a marker if you've got a marker i'm working down here only today and i'm working in the middle part i'm going to put my totem pole remember it's going to go up like this and then when i fold my paper around we'll be able to see just the middle I do have some cheat sheets here um, of totem animals that are kind of already abstracted. Remember, abstract means they don't look real. You can still tell what they are, but they don't look real for this particular one. Um, you got a penguin and a baby and a turtle and a, I think it could be a hippo or a pig, a bird. That could be a dolphin, whale, or a shark. Elephant, monkey, a bull, or a cow. Ferret or a raccoon. This could be a cat, a tiger, or a cheetah, or even a panther, depending on how you decorate inside of it. A snake or a lizard, a bear, 
This could be a goat or this side looks more like a horse. So depending if you want to do a horse, you might do it that, that side or a goat, you would give it a different type of eye. Beaver or chipmunk, fox or dog or a bird. So um, for me, I think I'm gonna do a bird. I'm gonna do that wise old owl that I was talking about before. And I'm gonna do my bird right here in the middle of my paper. Again, I'd like you to draw with pencil. That way if you make a mistake, you can erase it. I am drawing with marker so you can see it better. It's kind of hard to see pencil on dark paper. So there's my little curve and I'm going to change this a little bit because I'm doing an owl. I want to do really nice big circular eyes like owls have. Nice big circular eyes. Okay. So there's my owl's eyes and then I'm going to do a little tiny beak. They don't have a very large beak. Okay. There we go. Right there. And then I want to do down here some little feet. And then I'm going to come in on the sides with some feathers and I'm going to make them kind of geometric abstract. All right. You can add as much detail as you want to the owl. I'm going to do a two, two little tufts of um, two little feathers coming up like that for the owl. And then that means when I do my other animal next week, I need to figure out what part of the animal that could be as well. Um, you can add any other designs that you want at this point. All right, and then you can start adding color. And you're just gonna have to experiment to see what works the best with color um, on darker paper. If you're working on white paper, you could really, size the limit, you could do whatever you wanted. But um, with a brown paper, it can be a challenge. And honestly, I don't color the whole thing in anyway. I like to leave a little bit of that brown paper showing because it always reminds me of the um, cedar wood that the totem pole artists would use when they were making their totem pole. And I think that looks kind of neat. So I'm gonna do limited color for mine. But again, we are, um, we are our own artists. And if you want to play around with color and add things that maybe wouldn't be in a traditional totem pole. You know, that's okay because it's okay to learn something new and make it your own as long as you understand the history and um, the culture behind it. That's okay. So I'm just adding a few colors for myself that I, I enjoy. And you can see um, my crayons are looking actually pretty good on this. They look pretty nice and bright. And I'm taking my time and I am not coloring uh, fast because I want to give it the attention it deserves. Okay, so this week we are only doing our bottom animal on our totem pole and that animal, since this is a personal totem pole, that animal needs to represent us and uh, next week we'll talk about maybe some animals that will represent family and loved ones. Okay, so I think I'm going to call this one almost done. Let me finish this fun little design I put up here. And I'm pleasantly surprised that my, oops, I meant to grab a blue. I'm pleasantly surprised that my crayons are showing up as well as they are. So crayons might be the way to go for this particular lesson. All right, there we go. And so now it is your turn. Here's that little cheat sheet. If you see an animal on this sheet that represents you, go ahead and draw it. If the animal that represents you isn't on that sheet, Make up your own. It doesn't even have to be a real animal. Any animal that represents you. So if you want to do a unicorn, have at it. But just as a hint, there is a horse up top. Just give it a horn. Uh, when you're done, save your paper and we will finish our drawing next week. You can pause this slide so you can finish drawing.